Yeah, so Venus is hell. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. Like if you if you imagine if you if you went to back to like medieval times and you asked a random peasant to describe hell, they would you know they would use some words like like fire and torment and deep underground and you know various other things. And what they didn't know is that they were describing Venus. <laughs> Venus sucks hard. If, if you just imagine all the planets in the solar system and all the moons, think of the worst possible place. And Venus is worse than that. All right. Which is weird because on the, at first glance, you would think Venus shouldn't be too different than Earth, right? It's almost the same size. It's almost the same mass. It's just a little bit closer to the sun than we are. You know, it's within the habitable zone of our solar system. So you'd think that Venus should be all right, but it's not all right. Sometimes Venus is called Earth's sister planet. Well, it's a twisted sister. <laughs> Check this out. Venus has an atmosphere made almost entirely of carbon dioxide, thick carbon dioxide, so thick that the pressure on the surface, the air pressure at the surface of Venus is 90 times that of Earth. This is something like the equivalent pressure of a mile underneath the surface of our oceans. This is so thick. The air is so thick that you would feel it. Like it'd be like this thin soup that you'd have to almost swim through to, to move around. But you're not going to be doing a lot of moving around because of the, the temperature. Because of this super, super thick atmosphere, it totally traps all the heat, giving Venus the highest surface temperatures in the solar system. That's beating Mercury. Remember, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, but has no atmosphere. So it's just baked. Venus is like baked plus clouds. So it's 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 a it's a wet heat. It's not a dry heat. Okay, we're talking like Florida, not Arizona. Like it's just miserable. And so the surface temperatures are like mid 600s Fahrenheit on average, if I remember right. There are some places, there are variations in the temperature across the, the surface. There are some places, the, the deep valleys are much hotter. They're in like the mid 700s. That's hot enough, by the way, that's hot enough for, or first of all, I should say the mid 600s, that's hot enough to melt lead. Sorry, if you're made of lead, you're going to melt. And if you're made of anything weaker than lead, you're also going to melt. You and me. And also all of our space probes. Our space probes last like 15 minutes on the surface. Uh, but these valleys where it's like mid-700s, that's warm enough, hot enough, that the ground itself is so hot that it's radiating invisible light. Just barely, just barely, but it's glowing a dull, weak red. The ground is glowing because it's so hot. <laughs> and on top of these carbon dioxide clouds, or, or on top of the carbon dioxide atmosphere, this thick, 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 thick haze, are a bunch of clouds that sit on top of it like a shell. The clouds are made of sulfuric acid. You know, acid rain clouds. And the sulfuric acid clouds, these are incredibly reflective. This is what gives Venus its characteristic brightness. Like one of the most reflective, highly uh, reflective planets in the solar system, if not the most reflective one. If you were to be up close to Venus, you actually couldn't look at it with your eyes because it would be so brilliantly white and so bright. It'd almost be like another star right there. Like you just can't look at it with your eyes directly. That's how, how, that's how reflective it is. And it's so reflective that less than 4% of the sun's radiation that hits the top of the cloud tops actually makes its way down to the surface. So on the surface, you would only vaguely be aware of the difference between day and night. Like it'd be generally brighter during the day and then generally darker at night. But you couldn't track the position of the sun. You know, it's just too thick. It's just too hazy. And, but that tells you how efficient this 
the Newsian greenhouses that even though 4% of the sun's radiation actually reaches the surface, it's so well trapped, it still maintains this ridiculously high temperature. But speaking of day and night, Venus is weird. Venus rotates backwards. It rotates backwards so the sun rises in the west. <laughs> rises, because you can't really see it. Rises in the west and sets in the east. And its day is only like half a year long. So its year itself isn't much shorter than the Earth's, but it's rotating so slowly that it takes, in just two rotations, you know, you've, you've completed an entire year. So that's a pretty lame calendar. <laughs> um, it, the rotation rate of Venus is so slow, it's like four kilometers per hour. Some I don't remember the exact number. It's slow enough that you can walk it. That if you could track the position of the sun and you can put it overhead, you could just keep a nice gentle walking pace and keep the sun overhead forever. Good luck trying that on the Earth. Earth rotates at something like 1,600 kilometers per hour. Like it's, you're not going to be able to do it. But Venus is slow enough. That's how slow it is. There's no evidence of plate tectonics. So it looks like the, the crust is solidified. It may have had plate tectonics uh, in the past, but they've certainly locked up since then. There, uh, there are appear to be active volcanoes, you know, sometime within the past few million years. Uh, there has been some volcanism. There appears to be lightning in the clouds. Uh, there are craters on the surface. There's about a thousand craters, which isn't that many, which suggests that the surface of Venus is relatively new, that sometime within the past few hundred million years, there's what we call a global resurfacing event, where somehow, probably because there's no plate tectonics, but the core of Venus is still so hot that all this heat internally just gets trapped and trapped and trapped and trapped, and it's like a pressure cooker building up inside the planet, and then eventually it flips, and blows the entire crust open and flips it around, releasing all that trapped heat and covering the surface with molten lava, like the entire planet covering it in molten lava. And then it cools and totally resurfaces it. You know, maybe this happens every few hundred million years. This doesn't happen on the earth because we have plate tectonics because we're constantly uh, releasing all that heat in our core through a nice, safe, gentle mechanism. We're not blowing our lid. Uh, Venus is messed up. Venus is messed up. There have been suggestions that maybe we could go to Venus and, you know, live there. Like, that's a good idea. Obviously, the surface is out. But if you go a few kilometers up in the atmosphere... The temperature is room temperature. The air pressure is room air pressure. It doesn't seem so bad. Yeah, sure, you got all this sulfuric acid clouds that are poisonous to breathe. But if you were to make a habitat out of hydrogen and oxygen, because the atmosphere is so thick, that actually lifts you up. It's like a, a buoyant gas in that kind of atmosphere. So their designs, of course, are ideas where you have this giant inflatable habitat that's filled to the brim with oxygen and nitrogen, you know, air, and that's floating you around like a bubble. All I gotta say is good luck with that. I'll see you next week. And next week, I'm going to talk about how Venus turned into hell. That'll be a fun story. So thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave some comments, and please go to patreon.com slash pmsutter so you can help keep this show going. Thank you. And don't go to Venus.